Greetings. Today we shall delve into a more advanced aspect of internationalization. If you recall from our previous discussion on internationalization, we explored a simplistic page allowing users to switch between languages. As elucidated in the prior presentation, our middleware skillfully extracts the accept language parameter from the user's browser and redirects them accordingly. In cases where the chosen language is unsupported, the default language reverts to English. However, with the integration of the next international package, it employs the next local cookie. I did attempt to modify the browser sensor's local to test the automatic language transition, but regrettably, it failed to yield the expected outcome. Today, I intend to unveil a more advanced middleware solution, one that involves explicit extraction of the language value to facilitate translation. Let us proceed. First and foremost, permit me to elucidate the underlying code structure. We commence with our project structure adhering to the same framework as before, albeit with a minor adjustment. We have introduced dynamic routing, which allows for the translation of page paths. Furthermore, we've transitioned from using constants for language values to employing JSON files. Given our TypeScript environment, we've taken the liberty of defining a specific type for this purpose. Subsequently, we introduce a constant named i18n, an object with two properties, default to local, set to English and locals, an array of strings encompassing French and English. The asconst modifier is a TypeScript assertion instructing the compiler to infer the most precise literal types for i18n properties. Following this, we establish a type alias, local, derived from the type of the local's property in i18n. It effectively defines the type for the elements within the local's array. Lastly, we introduce another constant default local assigned the value of i18n.defaultLocal. This serves as a convenient shorthand for accessing and assigning the value of i18n.defaultLocal to default local. Moving on, we delve into server actions, a novel feature introduced in Next.js 13. You can change data directly on the server side using server actions from the front end. This gets rid of the need for an extra API layer and speeds up the process of changing data. This feature proves particularly advantageous for applications requiring real-time data updates. We proceed to define a constant variable, dictionaries, structured as an object of promises. The keys of this object correspond to the local type from the i18n constant, while the values are promises that resolve to a type called page data, as defined within our types. The getLocals function, asynchronous in nature, accepts a local parameter of type local. It returns a promise ultimately resolving to a page data object. Within the getLocals function, we initially attempt to retrieve the dictionary for the specified local from the dictionary's object using the local parameter. In the event of the absence of the desired dictionary, a warning message is displayed and the function defaults to the default local as stipulated in i18n.defaultLocal, subsequently retrieving the dictionary for the default local. Should any errors occur during the dictionary retrieval process, an error message is presented with another fallback to the default local. Ultimately, the function returns the retrieved dictionary or the default dictionary as applicable. Finally, we introduce a new middleware. We define the getLocal function, which accepts a next request object and returns the preferred local based on the accept language parameter within the header. This determination is facilitated through the match function and the local specified within the i18n configuration. The primary middleware function is subsequently defined, which scrutinizes incoming requests to identify those lacking a local. When such a deficiency is identified, it employs the getLocal function to ascertain the preferred local, subsequently redirecting the request to the same path name with the local incorporated. This middleware export is encapsulated within the auth middleware function, 
encompassing additional authentication-related configurations. The script also exports a config object, specifying root matcher patterns in keeping with prior conventions. With the configuration elements addressed, we now proceed to replace the variable. It's worth noting that in contrast to our previous example, we now rely on the params property for language value propagation. The navbar component receives a langprop, signifying the current language displayed in the navigation bar. As a client component, it features a menu state variable initialized as null through the use state hook. This menu variable serves to store data pertinent to the main page. Additionally, the component leverages the use effect hook, executing a callback function whenever the lang or menu dependencies undergo modification. Within this callback function, we define an asynchronous function named fetchData. This function initiates an API request to retrieve main data for the specified lang employing the getLocals function previously defined in server actions. Upon successful data retrieval, the main data is extracted and assigned to the menu state variable using setMenu. In the event of any errors during data retrieval, these are logged to the console. The fetch data function exclusively executes when the menu variable is null, which is either during the initial render or when menu remains unset. The href property of the link components is dynamically configured based on menu variables, specifically home underscore href and about underscore href. It's important to note that the local switcher is no longer needed as these actions transpire behind the scenes. Similarly, the landing navbar also receives a lang prop, signifying the current language. It awaits the result of the getLocals function with the lang value provided as an argument. The getLocals function is presumed to return a promise which is subsequently awaited for resolution. The outcome of this promise is then deconstructed to access the main property. Given that the landing navbar is a server component, hooks are not necessary. In configuring the href of the link, we set it to slash page slash dollar main dot home underscore href, where main dot home underscore href corresponds to the value of the home underscore href property within the main object as obtained from the get locals function. Within the landing component, which mirrors the actions of the landing navbar component, a lang prop is received. and the result of the getLocals function is awaited, again using the lang value as an input. The result is deconstructed to access the landing property, serving as a source for acquiring the requisite values consistent with previous practices. On the main page, our approach mirrors that of the navbar. Hooks are utilized and the retrieved data is employed accordingly. I believe we have comprehensively covered the necessary elements. Before we conclude, I kindly invite you to subscribe to support the channel if you have found value in this presentation. Without further ado, let us proceed. As we transition to the next phase, we must manipulate the browser data. This can be accomplished by utilizing the sensor. In my current configuration, English is set as the default language. Let us endeavor to change it to French and observe the outcomes. 
As you can see, the system is operating precisely as anticipated. With the root also reflecting the translation. This concludes the core content I intended to present today. I extend my gratitude to you for your attentive viewership. See you next time.